So <clears throat> a couple things came up while I'm preparing the other post framing for this end of this beam. The other end was a matter of so much stuff in here. The other end was a matter of <clears throat> uh, it being a length that puts it inside this wall at least three and a half inches. And then we did, like I was saying, we put uh, one two by four in, and then a rip of half inch plywood, and then another two by four. And so now we have three and a half inches of purchase uh, underneath the end of this beam. It's coplanar with our wall that's flying in from this direction. And ultimately, we will just use it to strike and cut off this extra wall board. And our new drywall will go on it, drywall <clears throat> or wall board, and it'll be finished. So that was a matter of adding in timber of the appropriate length until we got to flush. Down here, I don't, this is going to be a post left in the middle of the room when we're finished. And I just need uh, two 2x4s two underneath this end of this beam, and that'll be a different beam with two 2x4s two on the other side of this duct, standing under it, and that crevasse on that outside wall will be packed in tight the way we did back behind us for this beam. <clears throat> but when it comes to putting together two 2x4s two to stand underneath this end, uh, I wanted to laminate them or join them, but they wander a bit. They aren't they weren't completely straight, but I do want a nice coplanar surface all the way down. And rather than wrestling uh, and digging through a pile to make sure I had perfect ones, I started at one end. So I got this end flush, and I got the sides flush, and I put two nails in here. <clears throat> now what I've got is levers, two long levers, and I use them like scissors down at this end. I can roll back and forth, or I can use a big bar clamp on there to shove one one way or another to drive how flush this is. I went along and it started to walk out. So I went down there and I used the clamp to drive those nice levers, uh, made easy work of steering these side to side like scissor blades until it was flush and I pin it here. And I go down a little farther and when it starts to come out, I change my clamp setup down here so that I'm pushing on both pieces and I steer it back and forth until it's flush and I pin it again and I do the same one more time here. And then I'm coming down to pretty pretty good here and I just threw the clamp on and put both pieces in both jaws so that they were forced to be flush and I finished putting them together there. Uh, I've moved to screws because I stupidly ran out of a battery for the pass load and I haven't got one today. So that was that made an easy job of putting two kind of wandering pieces together and forcing them to live with smooth sides making kind of the straightest post framing post that we could given what we had. Uh, another item that I want to bring up is a little piece of wall plate. So this is the temporary wall sole plate and we had <clears throat> sole plate remnant left right there that we stood all this new lumber onto and we really need to have a little piece of plate. We're going to want a little piece of plate before this post stands on it. We wouldn't send end grain down to the subfloor, it would have a little piece of plate. Uh, so it's going to be a little shorty guy. Now normally, when we're talking about lumber, it's nice to have quarter sawn, quarter sawn, quarter sawn, which would mean, <clears throat> well, let's just demonstrate. These are all the little ends I left, cut off of pieces that I've been cutting around here. And let's find a nice example. Here's a nice example of quarter sawn. In hardwood and a furniture building or fine woodworking, we like our wood to be quarter sawn, which puts the grain almost straight up and down. Uh, this is softwood and it's cracked up and the grain is uh, very wide because this was grown quickly. But this is an example of quarter sawn. Now you've got some slab sawn, which you can see you have far more uh, uh, curve showing or, uh, you know, this is real flat sawn, but this is actually going to be ideal because you can imagine this is a short piece and if I tried pinning this short piece a couple times down to the floor, what am I going to get? More of this. It's just going to split on me. It, though it's a an, an desirable grain orientation for most things and in hardwood uh, it's a completely different animal and you don't have to be so careful about splitting. But in framing lumber that's immediately what's going to happen here. It's just going to go plink plink and split right up on me. So I'm going to make a choice in a short run to find myself uh, th this would be fine. 
uh, but this is ultimate here because as you can see it's quite like plywood in that when I pierce and pull down I'm pulling all those layers together and the urge for it to check or crack up this way is far less significant. So this will be what I pick to make a little shorty plate with and for every other application where you need a little block here, a little block there, you're going to want to push around and dig around through all your blocking and choose um, wisely based on your grain.